Coach Jackson said some good things to say about you. Um, and what does that kind of mean to you hear stuff like that? Um, it means I'm doing the right thing. Um, I just try to come out here every day and do my best, um, do what the coaches ask of me. So, yeah. Why do you think you're having success in this game? It's what about what you're doing or what about the scheme that is leading to having this kind of production? Um, just just listening to what the coach is saying, um, following the, the leaders, like guys like Shelton and um, Meter, um, following after their lead and just doing what coach asks. I mean, everything he asks, I try to do to the best of my ability. And that's it. Walk me through that transition going from linebacker to defensive line and what that was like for you. So in high school, I always played a DN. I, it was always a DN. Um, I played some linebacker, but it wasn't like a, a full sand position. Um, I always had my hand in the dirt. Um, my freshman year, they just threw me inside, and I was just one of the guys who knew I could hold my own. And I've been playing D-tackle ever since. So for the last four years, I played D-tackle at FAU, and that just transitioned to them. For a guy that's trying to make the team, um, but you're out here trying to learn the whole deal. You ever have to be careful about not putting too much pressure on yourself, uh, you know, just fighting here? Um, always, but like you said, um, you're out here to make the team. Uh, so, I mean, you don't want to beat yourself up on a lot of things, but you also want to come out here every day and give it all you've got every single day. So uh, I try not to um, kill myself on too many mistakes, but if I do mess up, um, it's very important that I get it corrected and don't come back out and make the same mistake over again. So, and just coming out here every day and going full speed. We've heard your coaches compliment you. What, what do you think specifically you've done over the last couple of weeks to, to, to earn that? Like I said before, just doing exactly what they asked of me. Um, not too much. I mean, not not more or not less of what they asked. Just do exactly what they asked of me um, to the best of my ability. That's all. You're considered one of the most productive players at FAU. Were you surprised when you went undrafted last year? <laughs> um, I mean... It happens, you know. Um, if I could have wrote the story, it'd been wrote, it'd been written different. But I mean, hey, that's the challenge that was put that was placed in front of me, and I'm all for it. When we talk to guys that kind of are in that situation, they tend to have a chip on their shoulder. Do you think that's something that's motivated you over the past year? And yeah, always. I mean, of course, that's what everybody wants, but it doesn't work out like that for everyone. Um, and yeah, I just I come out here every day and I think about it, um, what I've been through, and just come out here and play as hard as I can every day. Is there anybody that you've kind of leaned on for advice or anything? Has you kind of you've tried to, to stick somewhere? Uh, Jamie Meter's been big for me. Um, he's been helping me throughout a lot. Um, Shelton to also. He, um, every every time I get to pick his brain on something small or what he does well, I ask him a lot. Um, the whole D-line basically has been really good to me, and Clyde, of course. What, what kind of advice has Meter given you? Because he's kind of, you know, he was an undrafted guy too, mm -hmm. and he's kind of finally found a home. So what's he kind of said to you or helped you with? Um, see, he's also been through the, the whole, like you said, the whole undrafted deal, and you know he just, he had to earn, earn everything that he had. So it's the same here. I mean, nothing's given to you at, for nobody, for anybody here. So just ask him like what he went through um, first coming in, um, his first camp, second camp, um, what what he done differently that that got him noticed or made him play better, just things like that. Any players you? Um, I try to take take a little game from everyone. Um, I mean, I was a lot smaller in high school, so in high school I looked into a lot of DNs and linebackers. Um, as far as the tackle, um, I just watch a lot of football and just try to take from every every piece of the game. How big were you in high school? Uh, two twenty five. Yeah. How much did you gain throughout college? Um. My freshman year, I came in. I started at 240. Um, my next year, I was up 275. Um, they had me on a really good weight program. Um, I kept my speed throughout the process, so that was good. Uh, I got up to my junior year about 3, 300, 305, and I've been there ever since. Is that kind of is that a challenge though to learn to play it that way? Even though you're keeping your speed, is that a challenge? To, to at first, it, at first it was. It was huge. Um, I didn't like it at first, honestly. Um, but I mean, you get used to it after a while, just like anything. You just have to get used to it, and yeah, it's been good. Did you, when you were playing a linebacker in high school, right? Mm -hmm. Did you ever think I'm gonna no. become a huge defensive tackle? I actually told my high school coach I didn't want to get bigger than 250 um, one day, and I mean, I mean, I feel great now. It's 
I feel like I was made to be this big. Yeah. Why Why'd you say that at the time? I mean, you know, you just at the time you play linebacker, so <laughs> you never think that oh, I'm I'm gonna go be a defensive tackle. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Do, do you still talk to him? It's that been brought up. Yeah, yeah. Um, I talk to him uh, every once in a while. He's he was a big part of a big part of my football career, so he's huge, huge for me. Did you grow up playing like as a little kid, or did you just um, start in high school? I played one year in little league. Um, I, I really played basketball a lot, and then when I got to high school, yeah, it just took off from there. Football was just everything. What position you playing basketball? A little bit of the four, but I was short, so <laughs> I didn't, I couldn't. Yeah, I wasn't getting any taller. So, um, it seems like you had a lot of batted passes. Is there, do you have some kind of trick to the trade that you're mastering here? Or? No, nah, it's not a trick. Um, it's actually Greg. He just says if you're not rushing, your pass is going to get your hands up. And I just try to get my hands up every chance I can. What are you doing differently in this camp? You, you mentioned earlier talking to the older guys and figuring out what to do to get noticed and things like that. What have you changed since you entered the league? Um, I think it's more of just, just taking what the coaches are saying. Um, doing what, what they ask, um, what they're looking for, um, as far as the way we play the game. Uh, from the older guys, is, you know, talking to them, seeing what they're doing, um, asking them to help, help me, how can I get better every single day? I think that's a huge part of it is, coach always says, um, don't make repeated mistakes. And that's been huge. I try, try to come out every day and not make the same mistake I made before. And that's been a big part about it, so. Um. My perspective is you're right up there, most pleasant surprises at camp. You know, we don't really know you coming in. Mm -hmm. You made a lot of plays and even you know, been up there on the depth chart. But you're you're at one of the most stacked positions on the team. Mm -hmm. Do you think about the numbers game and how that is a pretty solid D line room that you're in and how that can be a tough thing even for a guy excelling? Oh uh, no. I mean it's out of my hands. That's that's, you have to ask Coach Hugh and those guys about that. I just come out here every day and try to play my game. You know, I can't focus on that. I just come out here every day and, and make a play. That's all I can do. Sorry. Craig has a, a reputation of being a guy who's going to play the best. Like, he's not going to think about drafts. Is that, did you know that about him at all? Is that something you're seeing? Um, I, you know, everybody knows about Greg. He's, yeah. a, he's a great guy. He's a great coordinator. Um, like I said, I try not to think about it. I just come out here and play the game. That's... That's all I can control. Other than that, that's that's up to those guys, Coach Hugh and Greg and the guys upstairs. On the flip side, is it encouraging that you're standing out in a pretty nice group? Yes, you always want to, it doesn't matter what group you're in, I mean, you always want to put your best foot forward in anything you do and, you know, try to help the team. Because whatever, whatever I can help the team, however way, that's what I'm here to do. You have a relative who played quarterback for the Patriots? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Rowan Davey. Yeah, what's the... Cousin or cousin? Cousin. Yep. Is he pretty involved in your life or? Not much. Not know him that much. Not much. Okay. And um, you collect pens. That's other. Yes, I do collect pens. That's, yeah, that's, that's kind of a weird thing to collect. How did that come about? I don't know. Pens are just they're special. Like you find that one nice pen and you just can never get rid of it. So that's how it started for me collecting pens. Um, all different kind of pens. It's weird, but yeah, I like to collect pens. So, what age did this start? Um, I want to say sometime in high school, because you know, when your mom go to school, school shopping for you, and she buys you a whole bunch of school supplies. You know, I, I always took all the pens, so you know, I usually lose them a lot. But then, especially when I got to college, it, it really picked up. Just, I just love pens. You have like a favorite? <laughs> the one that writes the smoothest. That's my favorite. <laughs> yeah. Are they like like different? Are they like collector item type? Like, are they? Not just like a regular pen, but like designs or. Oh no! I mean, or? it could be a regular pen because sometimes the regular pen write the best. Okay. So it's it's all on how the pen writes. As long as it's smooth, it's fine with me. I can use it. Is there a difference between a collector of pens and a pen hoarder? Because I am a pen hoarder. Um, I just have a, a big tray, <laughs> and it's just full of pens, all different kind of pens. I mean, I, I just love pens. I can't. You're instantly my favorite player. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> I How many do you have? No, I have a whole bunch in my car. Um, 
I want to say I have like 40, 30 to 40 pins in my car. Um, and I have a box in my house. It's like a, it's probably 200 pins in there. You ever write in pencil? Yeah, I like the lead pencils. The, um, when the tip gets really smooth, those are my favorite. You don't chew on, you, you got to chew on pen caps too? I don't chew on the pen cap because I like to, I like my pens to be covered. So I try not to ruin the cap because then you're going to ruin the pen. So. Are there any valuable, like, special pens in the mix, like expensive pens? Um, I have a blue pen. It's a, a blue ink pen, and it's silver, and it's the smoothest pen I have. Uh, I've had people try to take that pen from me, and I just, <laughs> yeah, I'll fight over that pen. <laughs>